Hey everyone, Paul Serve here, and I got 20 tips that will help you out on your journey through Coral Island's 1.0 full release. I'm going to focus more on the mid to late game, but I'm also going to include some early game tips too to help everyone out. If this video helps you out in any way, consider smashing that subscribe button and also hitting the notification bell. So grab a snack, sit back, and let's dive right into the video. There are a bunch of game settings that you should look through first. One of the most important settings to look at is the game time speed. 100% is around 20 minutes per day in real life. And 50% is about 40 minutes per day. I would suggest going to 50% at the start because the game can be extremely overwhelming. You can also toggle sprint so you don't have to hold down the key as well. You are able to change the hour time format I personally use AM to PM, but you can stick with the 24 hours as well. You can actually toggle the combat for the mines as well. If you leave it on default, monsters will aggro you if you get close enough to them. But if you switch it to hit to aggro, all monsters actually become passive until you hit them. You can also customize your keybinds for both keyboard and mouse. And there's even more supportive options like colorblind mode, increasing font size, and more. Make sure you comb through all of the game settings so you can customize them to your liking. Stamina will be a big problem for you, but lucky for us, we got a free way to get stamina. And that's in the form of candid tree seeds. You unlock this craftable recipe at level 1 foraging and it only takes 1 sap and 3 tree seeds. They could be any tree seeds as well, so make sure you save them all. What I like to do is turn the game speed down to 50% and go shake all of the trees on my farm and in the forest. I might just be unlucky here, but it seems like day 1 and 2, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of seeds in the forest. But there is plenty of seeds on your farm, so make sure you go around and shake all the trees you can. After a while, you're going to want a better stamina solution. The answer is bug jerky. I know, it sounds really icky, but just hear me out. The first step is to get to a level 2 house for the kitchen. The kitchen is going to need 100 wood, 50 stone, 10 bronze bars, and 5,000 coins. Next, we're going to need the grill from Luke's shop, which is going to cost you 2,500 gold. The third step is going to be upgrading your hoe tool to at least bronze. I know, in games like this, upgrading your hoe is not really something we upgrade early, but trust me, it's worth it. Now, you're going to start in front of Jack's animal shop and work your way to the left because we are digging for ground beetles. And ground beetles are pretty cool because they are year-around bugs. I typically end up leaving this area with about 15 or 20 ground beetles. After you've dug up enough, make your way back to your kitchen and start cooking some bugs. For every bug that you cook, it's going to net you two bug jerkies in return. These restore 20 extra stamina versus the candid tree seeds, and you don't have to go around shaking trees for 20 minutes at the end of your day. I will typically finish with about 50 bug jerkies all together, and they will last me for a very long time. Oh, and here's a little bit of a bonus tip. It seems like bug jerky is a universally liked gift. Can you imagine if somebody came up to you and they were like, I like you, here's some bug jerky, and you just saw like worms and ants just wiggling it, uh, I don't know, but now you know. <laughs> Another free way to restore stamina early on would be the hot springs. Let's just say at the start of the game, the hot springs look extremely weak and you may even give up on it as you play through the game. The thing is, this hot spring actually upgrades over time as you complete more and more goddess bundles. Also, there's really hot characters like Kenny here who come here and you can see their swimsuit like all year around. So I don't know, maybe you should just come here at least for that. <laughs> but it eventually goes from two to eventually like 9, 16 per tick, so it gets really good really fast. You'll want to complete Goddess Altars anyway though because hardwood is going to be a huge, huge wall for you. And that leads us into our next tip, which is how to get hardwood. Hardwood is going to be a huge mid to late game wall. At the start of your file, you'll be able to gather some wood, about 40 pieces on your farm. Typically, you would need a silver axe to destroy these stumps, but you can use explosives because they're on your farm. You'll want to use these pieces of hardwood to upgrade your pickaxe and your axe. Once you complete six goddess altars, you'll be able to unlock this new area in the forest. 
In this forest area, you're going to get one hardwood spawn per day. You're going to need a silver axe to destroy this, and you won't be able to use an explosive out here. You're only able to use explosives in the mine and on your farm. Don't worry if you miss a day here, because a new hardwood log will spawn. After you complete 14 goddess altars, you'll unlock the final area where you will farm a bunch of hardwood. There's two ways to enter the new hardwood area. One is right next to the monkey shop. And the other entrance is actually some stairs where you farmed the previous hardwood with six altars. There's going to be two new types of trees here, which are both hardwood trees. They drop seeds as well, so you can take them back to your farm and plant as many as you want. There's actually one more way to get a hardwood, and that's from the carpenter shop. Now you're probably asking, hmm, well I've been there before and she's never sold me hardwood. Well, once you get to the town of rank B, that's when she starts selling you hardwood. It goes for 150 a piece, and it can get a little bit expensive, but honestly, at this point in the game, you're probably making so much money that if you need a mass buy hardwood, it's not going to hurt you that much. After you unlock 14 bundles, you also unlock the dig site. The dig site is going to be found at the beginning of the hardwood area. This place has a chance to spawn all kinds of fossils and mysterious geodes. So if you're still trying to complete your museum, this is a great way to try to get what you need. And it spawns daily, so you can make it a part of your routine. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a daily routine video by me. I think that would be really fun. Do you want to earn a lot of money without having to farm? Mining is still a great way to make money. They nerfed gold and osium ore quite a bit in 1.0, but osium ore still sells for 150 per piece. If you take the gem increase perk, it actually increases it to 172 gold per piece. Couple that with the double ore perk, and you're going to be making a lot of money still. I like to go to floor 1, 5, 15, 25, and then 30, and slowly dig my way down to 39. You don't have to commit the whole day to farming Osium ore as well, and you can still make a lot of money just visiting those floors. I wanted to quickly mention Osium kelp in this section, because it sells for 150 a piece, just like Osium ore. There is something different though. Osium kelp, I believe, is being counted as an artifact because it is sold for 195 a piece after you take the artifact's selling perk. You're going to need a lot of Osium kelp early on in your playthrough, so definitely don't sell it for money at first, but just keep this in mind for later in the game because you can make a lot of money from Osium kelp, like a lot more than Osium ore, but I just get both every day. Because decorating in this game costs a lot of money, and I am poor, so <laughs> I need all the money I can get. Participating in winning festivals actually has a really big importance now. Not only do you get a friendship bonus with everybody, but you also get merit, points, and rewards. If you head on over to the community center, you'll be able to find the Merit Exchange Shop. Here, you'll be able to exchange all of your merit points for elixirs, scarecrows, and also a stamina fruit. You can get merit points from doing festivals, winning at festivals, completing errands, um, and also I believe the BOS hideout errands as well. So make sure you're doing all the things to get as many merit points as you can. I would recommend saving it for the stamina fruit first because it's probably the most vital, but I mean, you can spend your merit points however you wish. Speaking of festivals, I have a few tips and tricks to help you out in your first year. Let's focus on the hot pot first. In the beginning, you're really not going to have much, but there is something that you can catch very early that's going to make everybody in the town love you. And that's going to be the crawfish. The crawfish can be found right next to your house on your farm. It is a very easy fish to reel in, even with a basic rod with zero experience. A crawfish is considered a loved item for the hot pot, and that's going to give you 80 points with all of the town folks. There are a lot of gold and osium options too, but why do more when you could just get by with a simple, regular crawfish? You'll know it's the right one when she says, mmm, delicious. Next up is the pumpkin smashing minigame at the Harvest Festival. The objective during this minigame is to smash as many pumpkins as you can, and the faster you smash the pumpkins, the bigger multiplier that you get. The controls during this minigame are very frustrating to say the least. If you're in front of a pumpkin and you're unable to smash it, 
just try moving a little bit. Do you know that there's going to be rotten pumpkins that pop up, and if you run into them, you're gonna lose 5 points. If you're struggling during this minigame, there's good news. You're able to restart this minigame as many times as you want. The next minigame I want to focus on is the Ring Toss minigame, which you can find at the Spooky Festival. Out of all of the minigames, I think this might be the hardest one. The best advice I can give you for this minigame is do your best lining yourself up with a skull. Try to have the arrow pointing just behind the skull. As you power your throw, you want to try to get that little crosshair to the yellow, so on that left side. If it's outside of the yellow bar, it's going to curve, so even if you line it up correctly, it may not go where you want it to, so be careful with it. I was streaming this over on Twitch, and it took me quite a few tries to get it. A lot of people struggle with this minigame, so if you are, you're not alone and just keep on trying. Because just like the pumpkin smashing minigame, you can restart this as many times as you want. If you do get first place, you will get yourself a free light ring, but more importantly, you get yourself 100 merit points. The sturdy computer is going to be a huge help to you. To get this recipe, go to Ling's lab. To make the sturdy computer, you're going to need 40,000 gold, 10 batteries, 10 silver bars, 20 bronze ore, and 100 scrap. Anything you buy in this menu, you will get a free item after you purchase it for the first time. There's also three components for the computer as well. With all three of these components, you will be able to see seasonal fishing, insects, and forageables. So if you're missing a fish or an insect, and you don't want to go visit the wiki or ask for help, the computer is a great alternative. You're also able to shop online, so it doesn't matter if Sam is closed on a Wednesday, you can still buy seeds from him on a Wednesday through the computer. So it's really, really good. I would definitely recommend getting the computer when you have enough resources. Ling has more useful items too, like the sprinkler mods. Please note that you're not able to just skip to the final one, which is the best one. You have to buy the auto fertilizer first, then auto seed, then auto harvest, and then finally all three together, which is auto SFH, which combines all three into one singular mod. Once you have the sprinkler mod, all you'd have to do is go up to the sprinkler and right click. You'll want to craft a lot of auto SFH because it combines all three of them and it's going to automatically plant fertilize and harvest your crops every day. It's really, really helpful and it saves you a lot of time. You will have to right click the sprinkler and grab any of the crops that it harvests though. Ling also sells the best scarecrow recipe in the game as of 1.0 and that is the ultimate scarecrow. You'll need 40,000 gold, 20 hardwood, 50 fiber, 5 resin, and 5 osium bars. If you don't like the look of the ultimate scarecrow, don't worry, you're able to change the appearance of the scarecrow with any other scarecrow that you have. Right click the scarecrow, hit change appearance, and put the scarecrow that you want in the little slot. And voila, it looks different, but it's still the ultimate scarecrow. Ling also sells an incredibly useful automation chest recipe. You'll need 60,000 gold, 10 batteries, 5 osium kelp, and 5 osium bars, and 200 scrap. After you buy the recipe, you will get a free chest, but you need another one to actually start using this. You'll need three batteries, two osium kelp, and three osium bars. After you have both chests, you're going to connect them. Do note you're able to go beyond just two chests, but for this example, we'll just use two. Then put the artisan maker or whatever you want around the chests that you want to automate. And then you want to put whatever it is you want to automate in the chest. For me, I'm using green tea leaves for this example. As you adventure further in the mines and rescue all the giants, you'll be able to upgrade your tools. Go to the middle altar of the giant's town. There, you'll be able to use fossils and gems to upgrade all of your tools. There's so many things you can do with your tools. I personally enjoy using hit drop, extra drop, and rare drops. Early in the game, no stamina drain and swift swing can help out, but later on in the game, when stamina is not really an issue, uh, I feel like they kind of become useless. Relationships and marriage has been expanded in Coral Island 1.0. Once you've reached level 8 friendship with someone, you receive a letter in the mail from the blacksmith. You'll now have the option to tell someone you want to get more serious with them by buying the locket over at the blacksmith for 1,500 gold. 
Once you hand the locket over, you will officially be a couple. The next step is to see all of their heart events, all the way to the 10th heart. After you've seen the 10th heart event, you're able to buy the diamond ring from the blacksmith for 5,000 gold. And then you're able to pop the question and get married. And there we have it, 20 tips to help you on your journey through Coral Island. I am so happy to be back making some videos on YouTube. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see on my channel. I wanted to show off my farm that I have been making over on Twitch. I have put so much work and time into this probably about two weeks now. If you want to come say hi to me over on Twitch, I am live every single day at 4 p.m. EST. December 16th is my two-year anniversary, and I'm not taking a single day off from Twitch, so it's going to be a really, really big celebration. But I hope you all have a wonderful day. Make sure you enjoy Crow Island, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care and have a wonderful day.